My name is Alberto Kost. I'm an associate professor of uh, medicine and neuroscience at uh, the University of Colorado, um, the School of Medicine. Great, and what's your primary interest in Down syndrome research? What is your research oriented toward? My research is primarily oriented toward um, uh, preclinical and clinical development of uh, potential pharmacotherapies or drug therapies uh, to improve um, cognition in individuals with Down syndrome with the hope of also uh, potentially delay or slow down uh, the progression of um, uh, neuro neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's type of disease. And where do you see the progress of this research at this point in time and, and, and at what point might we expect some real outcomes in terms of therapies well, uh, that my part, uh, I'm, I'm running a clinical trial, which I'm going to talk about uh, tomorrow, uh, um, that uh, actually uh, has a, uh, a, term, a completion date, uh, which is uh, July the, the 7th. Uh, we'll actually have a complete data set that we're going to start analyzing. The problem right now is that it's a uh, double-blind placebo-controlled trial, and therefore I don't know which group is taking uh, the actual medication and which group is taking uh, the placebo, so I can't really identify it. All I can say right now is that there are some individuals who seem to be benefiting from the treatment, even though it's hard to tell whether that's just a placebo effect or not at present. And benefiting in what regard? What specifically is the um, clinical trial? In, in the trial, uh, uh, just like uh, Lena Dell just talked about, we're using many many uh, different uh, neuropsychological assessments and, uh, and there is a clear improvement in a subset of individuals uh, uh, that we're seeing. So um, whether that's going to be long term, whether that's going to be a, uh, to, to actually have a, a positive impact on that person, we really don't know for sure right now. So. Interesting. Now, I understand, too, uh, that you were blessed with a 15-year-old trisomy 21 daughter and that that had a significant career or, or, or led to a significant career change for you, Yes, too. Uh, that was, uh, uh, she is uh, currently 15 years old. Her name is Chichi, T-Y-C-H-E. Uh, um, it comes from the Greek, so, uh, uh, and... Um, and, uh, and yes, I mean, uh, uh, she was born 15 years ago, uh, almost 16 now, uh, and I started my career in Down syndrome uh, less than a year after that. Before that, um, I was um, uh, finished, uh, finishing some um, postgraduate graduate training at uh, Baylor College of Medicine, and I was basically specialized in looking at uh, synaptic function in the brain. and. Um, and considering uh, uh, going back to a career in medicine and, uh, and, and basically conclude a, uh, a neurology uh, residency training that uh, I had abandoned a long time ago. And uh, um, with the birth of my daughter, basically, uh, um, I realized that there was an unmet need uh, for uh, uh, the type of research that I was doing. Most of the people who were at that uh, at that point doing research in Down syndrome were geneticists and had no idea of how the brain worked or or how to uh, potentially intervene so uh, uh, so I basically felt that it was almost like a call uh, for action um, uh, that was sent from somewhere and uh, and that uh, um, it would be a, an important thing to uh, be associated with that kind of research, and I've been doing that for almost a decade and a half now. Wonderful. And and what do you think would be the most significant cultural or sociological factor that would really bring this research to the forefront and really, really help developments to speed along much more quickly toward potential therapies or treatments or cures for these? Well, patients? I mean, I guess well, we're talking to an American audience, and. Uh, and uh, Americans understand success. And uh, as successful clinical trials that show some promise uh, come about, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to 
potentially change the mentality of people to understand that uh, Down syndrome is not something that's written in stone and that uh, uh, cognitive performance uh, can potentially improve over time with the help of medication. And obviously, I mean, uh, and I'm not here discounting uh, more classical interventions like uh, um, physical therapy, uh, speech pathology, special education, all those form a part of a continuum that uh, need to be uh, addressed with those individuals. But success will basically breed success and, uh, and people will start to understand uh, that uh, uh, things can uh, improve from the situation that they were told when they first got their, uh, the diagnosis of their child. It's exciting to be here in Paris at this international conference sponsored by the Lejeune Foundation and to hear so much promise and so much hope for really imminent possibilities of therapies or treatments for this disease. As we know, Jerome Lejeune was interested in finding a cure and not just a treatment for these diseases. We really sincerely wanted to find a cure and it sounds like we're almost there in some cases. Absolutely, and, uh, and, and it's actually an honor to be here right now because uh, uh, as I told you before, basically uh, Dr. Lejeune was an inspiration for uh, my work and, uh, and uh, I mean the only thing that I really uh, uh, feel bad about is the fact that uh, I, um, I started my career two years after he passed away and, uh, and I didn't have the privilege of actually meeting him, but uh, I I did meet several individuals who actually uh, uh, had talked with him and, uh, and shared some of his passion and I, I read most of, uh, of his papers and, uh, and uh, I'm, as I said I'm really honored to be continuing that tradition that uh, Dr. Lejeune started and I'm, and I'm really happy to live in, in a time in which uh, um, not only um, uh, It's, it's a time where uh, some, uh, it's not only uh, parents that have uh, uh, some hope that's almost baseless, but uh, finally uh, that is enough evidence that even scientists nowadays uh, have some uh, real hope for uh, some brighter future that uh, um, we'll be creating through science, and uh, which is basically something that uh, Dr. Lejeune, if he were still among us, I mean, I uh, would be probably uh, very happy indeed. Yes. Sure. And, and speaking as the father of a Down syndrome child and speaking to an American audience, as you acknowledge, uh, what sort of words of encouragement would you have for families to get, in, get families involved in, in helping to fund research or to, to, to bring pressure to the government, perhaps, for funding more research well, for other individuals? I believe, the, um, I believe families have uh, three um, major roles to play uh, in uh, helping Down syndrome research. I mean, absolutely, there is the political pressure. We're in the United, we are in the United States, so uh, um, uh, you can always uh, put political pressure for things to happen. Uh, the example of parents of kids with autism is a great example uh, where they have gone to Congress, they have lobbied at every single level, and uh, today it's one of the most uh, um, thriving fields um, in um, modern science is uh, the field of autism and uh, and I think with uh, the the results that we have right now and the potential uh, for uh, some real therapies just around the corner I think uh, it will be very critical uh, for those parents to mobilize keep that momentum go uh, coming and and of course I mean we do need uh, uh, financial support science is not done in a vacuum I mean, sure. uh, science is an exp expensive endeavor and uh, and uh, and we definitely need uh, a lot of funding uh, to keep it going so uh, uh, that's the second um, um, part uh, type of participation that the parents can have and of course there is a third important participation which comes now uh, with the uh, real um, um, realization of those clinical trials, they're becoming, uh, uh, they're all coming around the corner. I mean, my clinical trial is just one of many clinical trials that uh, are just starting to be uh, designed and uh, they will probably come on board in a year or two, many of those uh, things that people are talking about here in this meeting. And um, at that point, I mean, uh, there's a 
very critical need for parents uh, to engage in that research, um, to talk with researchers, uh, try to understand whether uh, the option of uh, enrolling their kids into a uh, clinical trial is right for them and, uh, and, and basically make that decision. Probably to, uh, and, uh, at best uh, make that decision together with uh, their physicians and, and um, anybody that uh, they think uh, um, could have an important input to that, but uh, make an informed decision and join uh, some of those clinical trials. Wonderful. Yeah, we know that the funding for Down syndrome research is minuscule compared to the no, funding for other, as you mentioned, autism. Yeah, absolutely. Men. It's dismal, and, and, and part of it is uh, it's a lack of uh, history on uh, advocacy from the parents. So, so there's a mission. There's, there's a way to become involved. And, yes. and we can see at this international conference of the Jerome Lejeune Foundation that there's so much promise and it's certainly a worthy initiative. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Alberto Costa, for speaking with us. Well, and thank you. Best of luck and, uh, in your and, research. And yes, I mean, uh, everybody can participate and, uh, and, uh, and chip in and, and help out. I mean, uh, there are many, many ways of doing it from being a scientist like myself to en enrolling uh, your kid in one of those uh, upcoming uh, clinical trials.